actually going to be checking the water quality of the river. So we're here at Riverside Park where we do one of our many different tests that we do directly along the Wenasquatucket. We actually check in throughout the spring um, with our amazing volunteers. And today we're just going to be seeing what our water looks like. So the first thing you need to do when you're checking the water quality is you need to grab a sample of water directly from the river. So I'm going to put my glove on. It's really important that when you're doing anything in the Manasquatucket River that you make sure that you're protected. And you always want to make sure that you wash your hands after because you are not supposed to touch the water in the Manasquatucket without washing your hands. I'm gonna go grab a water sample. So here's my sample, and now that I've got my full cup of water, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test for four different things inside of our sample. Four different elements that should be at particular levels. Um, one really important thing to note is Normally we take two different samples at two different sites of the water. So I took my sample up here, but there's a dam right next to me over here. And another great spot to take a sample would be at the bottom of the dam. Um, there's gonna be higher levels of oxygen if we do the sample down here, as opposed to up here where it's a bit more shallow, there's a lot more sunlight, it makes the oxygen levels a little bit lower. So we should expect when we test for oxygen, for that to be a little bit different. So now that I have my water sample, the first thing that I'm going to test for is I'm going to test for something called dissolved oxygen. So take a second and take in a really, really deep breath. So you just took in oxygen, right? We all need oxygen in order to survive. Oxygen is in the air that we breathe. For our friends that live inside of the water, they get their oxygen in a different way. They actually get their oxygen it's inside of the water and they breathe it in through their gills as opposed to we breathe it in through our lungs. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my testing tubes and I'm going to use one of my Lamont testing caps. These are really great. And we love these so much because instead of getting a label or something like that, we actually see the color of the water change depending on the levels of oxygen or depending on the levels of anything that you're testing. So I'm going to take my sample and I'm actually going to fill it up all of the way. I'm actually going to use two of these testing tablets. So anytime, say if you wanted to do a test of like a river near you and you have these at home, all of the directions are actually like inside of the packages, but for this purpose, we're going to put two of our tabs in here. You actually want the sample to be overflowing just a little bit. That's the perfect amount. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to continue to just shake up my sample, and that's going to help break down this tablet. So when we are testing for oxygen, we want to make sure that our level is above a five. And we're looking at five parts per million. Normally we'll see that as PPM. So PPM is a scientific measurement that we use for a lot of the, the um, elements that we're going to be testing for today. But the really important thing to understand is if you think about a million buckets that are lined up right here, about five of those we would want to be filled directly with oxygen. So that's really the, the amount that we're looking for. We want to have at least five. If we have anything below five, that means that it might be really hard for our friends that live in the water to get the oxygen. All right, so now that our sample is ready to go and our tablet has settled into the water, we can now get a reading for what our sample will look like. So I'm using this color chart right here, and it's not a perfect science, but it gives us a good idea of how our colors in our tube should be changing based on the amount of oxygen that you're seeing in the sample. So I'm gonna put my sample right up here. And you can see 
that the 4 ppm, that dark pink, is a lot closer to our sample than that bright orange that's on the bottom. I would say too that our sample is probably just a little bit lighter than the 4 that we're seeing. So I would say that my water quality is probably about 3 parts per million. And so one of the things that I mentioned when we were grabbing our sample is that because of the location that I grabbed my water from, it, we were expecting to see a little bit less um, oxygen in the water. So if we took a sample down at the bottom, we would hope to see a higher oxygen level. That also is a big indicator that our animals that live inside of the water probably aren't hanging out at the top, but are rather hanging out on the so what I'm going to do now, that I know by dissolving oxygen level, just so we can keep track of our results, I'm going to write them here. So for dissolved oxygen, that was our first test, we're going to go with three parts per million. And I'm also going to put meh, because it's not right? We were really hoping for a five, but it's also not a one or a two, which would cause us a little bit of concern. All right, guys, so I am now going to be testing the pH of the water. So when we're talking about pH, we're talking about how acidic or how much acid is in the water, or the opposite would be how basic the water is. So when we think of something with a lot of acid, I always like to tell my friends to think of a citrus fruit, right? Like an orange or a lemon or a lime. That's something that has a lot of acid in it, all right? Now on the other side, the opposite of acidic is basic, all right? So things that are basic are like milk. Milk is really basic usually. Just like dissolved oxygen, our, how our water turned to color after we added one of these tabs in. The same thing is going to happen when we test for the pH. We're going to get a color. And we're going to compare that color to a scale. Okay? And the scale is from 1 to 14. 1 being very acidic, 14 being very basic. Now, we have fresh water in the Winnospatonic River. So when we want to test the pH, we're looking to get a pH right around in the middle. So just like how we tested for oxygen, we're going to take our little test tube here. I'm going to fill up our test tube. Pull up to the 10 milliliter mark. Now I'm going to take one of our tabs here. I'm going to drop it right into our test tube like that. Tab is in. Closing it up. So now I'm just mixing up that little tab into the water and it's starting to disappear and our water is starting to turn a different color. All right, our tab is now completely dissolved and if you notice, our water is looking a little bit greenish. Now we're gonna figure out the pH of the water. This is where you actually get a number and you figure out if your water is acidic or basic. All right, so I'm gonna reference my little chart right here. You notice our water turned a different color. We're going to compare the color of our water to these colors right here. Awesome. So Miss Alicia just read our pH levels. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write down what she said of a six
But when we have too much of it, that's an indicator that there could be a big source of pollution entering our water base. So some big examples of nitrogen could be from if there were fertilizers or pesticides that were going down on the and then flowing into the river. That would be a, a big source of concern for the health of our river. So what I'm going to do here is I take my test tube and for this one I'm only going to fill it up about halfway to the 5 milliliter line. So now I'm at the 5 milliliter line and we'll go halfway. I'm going to take my tablet and I'm just taking one tablet and it doesn't want to go inside my test tube so I'm going to make it invert my sample. I'm just going to move it off the back. So when we're looking at nitrate or nitrogen in the water, anything higher than a 5 would be concerning to us. Anything less than a 5 would be okay for our water sample. So I'm using the same color wheel right here and you can see that based on the amount of nitrogen our sample is going to get some level of pain. So our sample now is fully complete and as you can see here we are definitely below our 5 ppm goal. So our sample is almost clear with just a little hint of which means that there's a little bit of nitrogen in the water, but definitely under five, which is exactly what we're looking for. I'm gonna put our sample at about two parts per million of nitrogen. So I'm gonna write down my two parts per million. I'm gonna put a smiley face because that's exactly what we're hoping for. All right, guys, so the last task we are going to be doing on our river water is going to be phosphate. So phosphate can come from a couple different places. So phosphate or phosphorus is actually really important for plants, all right? So we do want to see a tiny, tiny bit of phosphate. Now, we don't need that much of it in the water, but sometimes we find a lot of phosphate from pollution. So from Sarah talked before about how nitrate can come from fertilizers, that kind of pollution. Well, phosphate can come from different cleaners in the water that get put in from storm drains or flushing them down the toilet, or it can even come from oil. So like motorboat oil that's in the water could cause an increase in phosphate. Just like our last test of nitrate, we're gonna put our tab into our tube full of river water. Our water will change color. This time it'll change to a shade of blue when we're testing phosphate. So we're gonna come back to our chart here and we're gonna compare the color that our water gets to the color on here. Now, when we're looking at phosphate, we don't want a phosphate that's too high because that can actually affect the oxygen levels in the water. We're looking for a phosphate around one or two, nothing really higher than two p. Yeah, so we want it to be a light shade of blue. So I will take my test tube. I'm going to fill my test tube up almost all the way to the top at 10 milliliters. Then I will take one of our tabs here. says that we probably don't have a lot of pollution or pollution that causes an increase in phosphates. 
All right, guys, so that concludes all of the water quality testing we are doing today. It is super important that the water quality is tested every so often so that we have a healthy river. All right, all these things combined and even more, there's more tests that we could have done today. They all help us tell the health of the river. We want our animals and our plants to have a healthy habitat, right? And we test our water quality all the time in the Winnesco-Tucket River. In fact, we've tested it so much that we can see a trend of the health of the water actually improving and getting better from the tests like these that we're doing. So we're seeing better pH, better oxygen levels, less pollution levels, which is awesome. We are helping to create a healthier Runasco Tucket River. So that concludes today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned a little something about water health and water quality. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.